Hi guys, it's me, Rachel. Um, I hope you're having a great day today. This week has been challenging, but I've, I'm, I've gotten through it, and um, everything will be okay. Um, I want to talk today briefly about the good stuff. After after being in, in church yesterday, not yesterday, but last week, I felt the Spirit, I felt the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to talk about the good stuff. <laughs> and I was looking at my soaps, my hand-washing soaps. I'm not a very fancy person. But when it comes to certain things, I, I like the best. Um, so, if it comes to getting a cheaper brand and it's a little less money, but the quality is not the best, I will go for the more expensive quality brand. And so on and so forth. So, I was looking at my soaps and I like... Um, the Live Clean hand soaps, they're expensive, but I absolutely love them because um, they make your hands feel so good in there. Their scents are very light and very natural. And so I was looking at these soaps going, um, it is so... It is so simple, but what I found out about quality is quality takes time. Sometimes we go for quantity, we go for how much of something, and we don't really think about the quality of it. I like to read books by CEOs, and I read this book recently about the CEO of Starbucks, and he said um, when they were growing Starbucks, um, the company was growing like daily, like stores every every year we're opening and all that were that were that was happening but while stores were growing the quantity of the quantity was growing but the quality was falling back because tip the more of something you have to manage the more careful and consistent you have to be about quality the quality of the product the quality of the services and quality of the overall um overall um aspect of whatever service you're giving or whatever whatever you're providing to the public or to whoever. So, the more of something you have to manage, whether it be a store, is the more careful you have to be about the quality of what it is you're managing. And this, this CEO of Starbucks uh, said that they were growing in want leaps and bounds but the more the the more stores they opened is the more the quality uh, of the product started to fall back and um, so he had to revamp Starbucks and unfortunately uh, close some stores and do some stuff 
because sometimes we think that more is better. We're like, let's get more. Let's do more. But sometimes more is not better. Sometimes, uh, as the saying goes, less is more. Because with less, you can focus on the the quality of something and not the quantity of something. Oftentimes, it doesn't depend on the quality on the quantity of something, how much you have, it depends on what are people getting when they get your product or service or even you. So it, so um, to people now, it really doesn't matter uh, what degrees you have or how much education you have or how much knowledge you have, it matters the, the quality of it. How are you putting this into practice? How are you um, managing what you have so far? Because um, a lot a lot of people, a lot of Christians are asking for more of God. We're like, Lord, we want more of you. Lord, give us more of your spirit. But we're not even managing the bit he's given us. Um, and he's saying, I need you to manage the quality of what I've given you and stop asking for quantity. He said, when I see you, um, you dealing with the um, quality, dealing with what I've given you with quality and care, then I will add to you the quantity that you want. And one of the things, one of the things that actually scares me about uh, churches coming back in the pandemic is that uh, we are just looking for butts in the seats again. But I sense the Lord really saying, what are the people getting when they when they enter pastors your church doors what uh qu quality are you getting not just of are they getting not just of the preaching of the word but every, any, any pastor worth his salt can preach a good sermon but what are they getting to manage their lives outside of that? Um, what are they getting to form community? And um, like, what are they, what are they get, getting to manage their everyday lives? And I sense the Lord really pushing us to not only get butts in the seats, but to improve the quality, not just of preaching or whatever, because different, different pastors have different talents and whatever. Some pastors tell stories. Some pastors are more biblically talented. Some pastors are more storytellers and conversational. And that's a gift that God is giving you music. But he's saying, what is the quality of what they're getting? What are they getting outside of Sunday morning? Um, and I know everybody's, every person is responsible with how, how they use the tools, but the Lord is saying to every leader, I, I, I can sense the Lord saying, are you giving them the tools that they need to 
thrive and um, structure um, with with their own lives outside of Sunday morning. Um, and I sense the Lord doing a lot of of things uh, post pandemic or at this stage of the pandemic that he didn't do before. And I sent him wanting to do stuff that he hasn't done before. And I think we just have to be open to what he's suggesting. And uh, away from pastors to uh, regular everyday folk, what is God getting when he gets you? What is the quality that he's getting? He doesn't need like five scriptures a day and you're you're not listening to him about your life. He wants the he wants quality time with you more than he wants you to read like ten scriptures a day. That's wonderful if you can do it. Yes, read the word, absorb the do reading plans. But he really is now asking for quantity from the church. And that's... No, he's really asking for quality from the church rather than quantity. Um, and that's where the top the top shelf stuff comes in. So you want top shelf faith, but you're giving him kind of oh whatever. Like I, I just pray when I have time. I just read the word when I have time. I just you know just willy nilly roll up on God when I have time. You're not going to get the quantity of stuff if you just roll up on God when you have time, when it's just so casual. You have to put time and, and yes, money, uh, money into what you want from God, and not just um, by tithing, um, but by giving over your tithing. Because I know sometimes uh, with my giving, he'll ask me to give something over and above. And I'm like, Lord, really? And he'll say, yes. I remember one time I was doing, uh, uh, I, I was getting ready to give and he said, uh, I gave my usual amount and he said, I need you to go back and give again. I was like, oh really? And he's, I said, yes. And he said, yes. And I said, okay. Um, so sometimes he will ask you to give over and above, not because he wants something from you, but he wants quality time with you, and he wants to give you the best, but he's not going to give you the best unless you show him that you, that you are ready to handle the best. Um, he get, he gives it to you whether you deserve it or not, but he wants to give you more than you could ever dream. But his questions uh, to you is, are you ready to handle the quality of stuff I'm going to give you, or do you just want the dollar store soap, or do you want the live clean soap? Um, that I was talking about earlier. He wants to give you so much in quality, but you're too focused on quality. You, 
you want more of God, more, Lord, we want more, but he's like, can you manage what I've already given you? Like, you want one more child, you're praying for one more child, but um, you can't handle the two you already have. You're praying for a partner, uh, a husband, or a wife, and you cannot manage the finances of your old life, and everything in your life is a mess. But he's like, I need to see you manage uh, the quality. I need to see you manage it with quality what I've given you before I bless you with more. And it's so awesome what the Lord is now doing, what he's saying. And I really think he just wants time with us. He just wants to to get to give us all things. And it's so funny because when when I first um, when he first gave me this title, I'm like, Lord, do you want me to talk about the the good stuff that you want want to give your people? He's like, Yes, but I don't I don't want you to talk about houses and cars and whatever. But I want to give my people peace. But they keep on watching all this news stations and putting uh, these variants in their minds and, and all of that, these shootings in their minds. He says, I want to give them love, but they're still nursing the hate from their ex-husband or wife. And they're blocking the love that people in their lives are giving them. Um, he's like, I want to give them joy, but they're surrounding themselves with people that are depressed and talk negatively all the time. The Lord cannot give you what, um, cannot give you more than what you surround yourself with, because if he tries to put in joy and you surround yourself with, uh, depression or sadness, that joy will get swallowed up. If he tries to put in peace and you surround yourself with warring thoughts and violent thoughts, um, it, your thoughts, will that peace will be drowned out. He, he will give you stuff, but you need to Allow your mind to accept the, the stuff, the top shelf stuff that he wants you to have. Um, he says, stop living below your worth. And he's saying, stop living below your worth. Stop living below your your worth. All, all your life you've been told you're only worth this much and you're only worth that much. Um, he's saying, stop living below your worth. And you're like, God, how do I do that? And whatever. He's like, the key to, to start living to stop living below your worth and come up to to his worth of you is your mindset. You need to change your mindset of what you deserve. Take on his word of what you deserve, not your own. He said, the cattle on a thousand hills, they're yours. Not only emotional cattle, the cattle of joy, the cattle of peace, the cattle of lo love, 
He said, all that you're looking for is yours already. You just have to believe it. And once you believe it, you'll automatically start walking in it. And I know, believe me, it's hard to believe because of what you see around you and what you've been told by society. I know as a person, as a black woman with a disability and a Christian, I'm told by society in subtle ways what I deserve. Oh, like, I only deserve this, or I only can ask for that because of funding issues or whatever. But he's saying, Rachel, change your perspective from what the world says you deserve to what I say you deserve, and it will transform your life. And um, it is so amazing to think like that. I'm just learning to do this, and it's so hard when you when you've been stuck in an inferior mindset all your life. It is so hard, but he's saying, "Take a few steps, and I will walk with you." He's saying, "Take a few steps, and I will walk with you." And your mindset will not change in a day. But if you put one thought in your mind of what he says you deserve a day, eventually you'll start walking differently. You'll start talking differently. It won't happen overnight. And that's the top shelf stuff that he wants you to have. He doesn't want you to have peace for a day or for a moment. He wants you to have that everlasting peace. The peace that passes all understanding that he's come to give you. He doesn't want you to have have love, have that hairy fairy love that is here today, gone tomorrow from friends or, or lovers. He wants you to have everlasting love that will last until he comes back to call you home. He doesn't want you to have the uh, the happiness of situation. He wants you to have joy. And the way to have joy is not to pretend, oh, I'm joyful. I have love. I have peace. He wants you to walk it out. He said, it won't be easy because some days you won't feel joy. Some days you won't feel love. Some days you won't feel peace. But you have to tell yourself and walk it out. And, and this is not about faking it until you make it. This is about understanding um, even though it may not seem real to you now, it is real to him. And the more you walk out the top shelf stuff that he wants you to have, is the more that you'll see it. And the top shelf spiritual and emotional stuff that he wants you to have will manifest in the physical stuff when he believes you can handle the quality of stuff he wants you to he wants to give you so he won't give you the mercedes until you can have joy in your ford you know he won't give you the husband until you can have joy with your sister. He won't give you the, you know, the peaceful mind until you can have, have peace with your spouse. He said, I, you need to start in increments. 
and don't beat up on yourself if one day you're you're not feeling joyful you're 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 mad or whatever he's like don't worry about it just get up and start again he said um his his mercies are new every morning so every morning that you get up his mercies are new. He wipes the slate clean, and he and he just loves you so much. And he wants to give you top shelf stuff, the good stuff. This sermon is called the good stuff. Um, and he wants to give you all the good stuff, physically, emotionally, financially. But you need to walk it out first. You don't need to fake it till you make it, but you need to walk it out. He's saying, walk it out. I've given it to you, but just walk it out. Even though you may not feel it some days, just walk out joy. Walk out peace. Walk out love. He said, just, just walk it out. And... The more you walk it out, is the more you'll start to feel joy. You'll start to feel peace. You'll start to feel love. I started an exercise routine uh, recently. And then the, fir- the first day of this exercise routine, I was just, like, not feeling it. And then... I just kept going and going, although I didn't feel it. And now, two weeks in, it's become old hat. Like, I I immediately just go into my exercise routine. And although I don't... Although I don't feel like it every day, I do it every day. I walk it out. Because I know that in the end, I will get the results that he wants me to have in my body. So, even though you don't feel joy one day, you just walk it out. And you don't pretend, oh, I feel joyful, although I feel awful. You could say, Lord, I don't feel joyful I don't feel loving, I don't feel peaceful, help me, and he'll help you, and you'll get up the next morning and do it again. Yesterday, I only did half of the routine because I was so tired, but did I beat myself up and said, oh, you should have done better, you should have done this, you should have done that. No, I just said at least I did a few songs. I didn't do all seven yesterday, but I did three. That's good. So celebrate even the steps of the of your life that God has given you. And if you fall back one day and don't do it. That's that's okay. His mercies are new every morning. So guys, I will see you later. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. And some of you are mourning over what you've lost, whether it be a relationship or a job. He's like, start celebrating with quantity what I've given you. Start walking out peace, joy, and love. And you'll see as you start walking that, that out and start giving me quantity instead of the, uh, and start giving me the quality, um, that you can give me, 
I won't restore that to you. Whatever you lost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, today for your peace, joy, and your love. And myself included, we will, we will walk it out. And even though we may not do what we want, would want to from day to day, Lord God, we know your mercies are new every morning. And you're there for us, and you're cheering us on. Even though we think we're failing, we are just learning. Every failure is a step to learn more about ourselves and more about you, Lord God. We praise you, we lift you up. In the name of Jesus, amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy is the never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I think I got that right. <laughs> I think it was mercies. They never come to an end. I could be wrong there. Um, I'll see you later. Bye.